Welcome to Africa Info Hub. In this video we are going to talk about why Africa was colonized. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. The colonization and dominance of Europe altered the course of history tremendously. Historians contend that the European powers hurried imperial conquest of the African continent began with King Leopold II of Belgium, who enlisted the help of European powers in order to obtain prestige in his home country of Belgium. The scramble for Africa took place between 1881 and 1914, during the period known as the New Imperialism. In this video, you will learn about the origins and consequences of European colonization of the African continent, with a particular emphasis on the Ashanti Kingdom, colonized by the British as the Gold Coast, and today the independent African country of Ghana. European colonization of Africa in the late 19th century. The size and capabilities of Africa as a continent have been severely undervalued and oversimplified as a result of a global scarcity of world knowledge. In the centuries before colonization, Africa was distinguished by a high degree of adaptability in terms of migration, administration, and daily living conditions. In contrast to closed reproducing entities with distinct unchanging cultures. The continent was made up of loosely knit groups of people, who were willing to accept outsiders into their communities. On the condition that they accepted the community's customs, and where a sense of obligation and solidarity existed that extended beyond the confines of the nuclear family. Pre-colonial societies were quite diverse. With some being stateless, others being ruled by the state, and yet others being run by kingdoms. A widespread acceptance and practice of communalism was evident. Land was held in common and could not be purchased or sold. Although other goods, such as animals, were owned individually. In those civilizations that were not stateless. The chiefs oversaw the everyday operations of the tribe with the assistance of one or more councils. The invasion of Africa by Europeans resulted in the establishment of numerous kinds of administration that are still in use today. Prior to colonization, however, Africa was home to a diverse range of political structures, ranging from mighty empires to decentralized groupings of pastoralists and hunters to small tribal groups. The introduction of iron instrument marks a watershed moment in the history of African civilization. Iron tools improved armament, enabled people to manage and clear dense and deep woods. Plow fields for farming, and made everyday life more convenient by allowing them to plow fields for farming. Because iron tools enabled Africans to prosper in their natural environment, people were able to dwell in bigger communities, which resulted in the establishment of kingdoms, and states throughout the continent. It was via this process that contemporary civilizations, shared languages, belief and value systems, art and religion were developed as well as lifestyles and cultures. Another distinctive feature of pre-European African communities was their preference for oral tradition, which was a feature that was not shared by other societies. Stories were told and passed down from generation to generation orally. This poses a threat to the survival of these stories since certain portions of them may be lost or told in a different way. Prior to colonization, national borders were also not a major source of worry. European powers fought for control of African countries mostly because of the natural resources they contained. It was necessary to draw lines through African settlements that had been in existence for a long time, and these lines are now recognized as national borders. The factors that led to colonization. The primary motivations for African colonization were economic, political, and religious in nature. During this period of colonization, Europe was experiencing an economic slump, with powerful countries such as Germany, France, and Great Britain experiencing significant financial losses. Africa appeared to be out of harm's way and to be a rich source of raw materials from which Europe could make money in the short term. Because of the cheap labor provided by Africans, Europeans were able to easily obtain products such as oil, ivory, rubber, palm oil, wood, cotton, and gum. As a result of the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, many products gained in significance. It is also possible that Africa's colonization was prompted by European rivalries. As Britain and France had been embroiled in a dispute since the Hundred Years' War. These countries became embroiled in a race to expand their territories on the African continent. A contest that was open to all European countries. British efforts to curb the slave trade off the coasts of Africa, had met with modest success in some areas. 
Nonetheless, the situation was different in the interior, where Muslim traders from north of the Sahara and along the east coast continued to do business, and many local leaders were adamant about continuing to employ slaves. The African Association, founded in 1788 by affluent Englishmen, was a major catalyst for the expansion of exploration. And as they traveled, they began to record data about marketplaces, goods, and resources for the wealthy donors, who provided the funding for their journeys. Morality became an increasingly important problem with the commencement of colonization in African countries. The Europeans were perplexed by the existence of the Muslim Swahili commerce, which prompted them to establish the three C's, Christianity, commerce, and civilization. During the 19th century, Europe saw a Christian renaissance. Initially, missionaries concentrated their efforts on the massive working class, with the hope of delivering spiritual salvation to the workers and their families. The Bible was made available to the workers as a resource. Because of their widespread success, missionaries began to search beyond Europe for new opportunities. Missions were established over the continent of Africa. Despite the fact that missionaries were not direct agents of European imperialism, they were instrumental in drawing European governments deeper into Africa. Missionaries frequently felt endangered by fighting within Africa. In their endeavors to evangelize Christianity, to introduce Western-style education to Africa, and to instill monogamy in African society. As a result, missionaries appealed to the governments of Europe for protection and intervention. Secondly, European explorers have been traveling around the African continent for ages in their quest to find new things and map the African continent in their quest for knowledge. The Suez Canal Company had completed its work at the northeastern edge of Africa in 1869, ensuring that trade would be well established in the New World. Livingston thought that civilization could be reached by excellent governance and education, and this was his final point. Livingston felt that the confluence of these three elements would put an end to human misery in Africa and bring the continent to the pinnacle of civilization. The moral ideals of Christianity would consequently serve as a guide for Africans. While education and business would inspire Africans to develop their own items in order to trade with Europeans. For this to be successful, a working and legitimate governmental structure was required in order to protect the civil rights of the citizens. Why did European countries colonize Africa so quickly? Because there were disputes among African chiefs. European countries were able to colonize Africa quickly. Within their tribes, these kings and chiefs were fighting to be the wealthiest and most powerful. During these disputes, European leaders exploited the circumstances and encouraged certain leaders to fight alongside them. Natural calamities also contributed significantly to Africa's quick and simple colonization. A severe drought struck several parts of Africa in 1895, owing to an abrupt decrease in rainfall. Few crops were grown, and the resulting food scarcity resulted in the deaths of many people and animals. A locust outbreak decimated the few crops that had been grown. In addition to this epidemic, the cow plague, which killed cattle, lambs, and goats, broke out in the 1890s. This resulted in even more animal and human deaths, and they were unable to challenge European forces due to their physical and mental limitations. Using force and brutality, European countries could readily seize control of any source of land. They were able to do so by employing stronger weapons, as well as the newly manufactured machine gun known as the Maxim gun, which was invented in the 1880s. This weapon could fire 11 shots per second, outpacing the African army's guns. Because European weaponry were not sold to them, African troops were unable to obtain them. As a result, Africans faced a military disadvantage. During the late 1890s, a new wave of diseases emerged, the first of which was a series of smallpox epidemics. Because of previous outbreaks in Europe, Europeans who were already in Africa had developed immunity to these diseases. Because the indigenous African population lacked immunity or resistance to these diseases, the African population was weakened. As a result, a substantial portion of the African people perished or became too weak to fight back. What do you think of our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thank you for watching.